So quite frequently when I'm designing a website, one of the requirements is to have certain sections of content that are secure so that we can control which users have access to them. Now in a perfect situation, this would be provided through some kind of full membership system where we'd have individual user accounts with individual usernames and passwords, possibly OAuth connected through to Google or Facebook or to a third party service which allows for recurring billing of membership fees such as Chargebee. However, at this point, Webflow doesn't offer any type of integrated membership system support and it doesn't have any membership system yet of its own, although it appears to be something that is in progress for the development team, at least in the early stages of planning. And this is currently October 2018 that I'm recording this, so I hope to see that at some point soon. What Webflow does offer right now is the ability to password protect individual pages or folders. And this means only entering a password to access them. That leaves the responsibility up to you to distribute the password to the people that need to have it, to update it regularly so that you can essentially call previous users who are no longer allowed access to that content from the system. You just keep updating it perhaps monthly and allowing your users to know the new password. It's not a very elegant system, but it is somewhat functional in simple situations where, uh, where the cost of having that information accessible um, to the wrong people perhaps isn't too high. We don't have to manage it with extreme strictness. Well, let's have a look at the mechanics of the security system because there are some particular things about it that I've discovered that gave me pause to reflect. So what we're gonna do here is in order to use password protection, we have to have a hosted website. We're looking at a hosted website that I've, I've got here. So I'm gonna create uh, a couple of things here. First, I'm gonna create just a general page, which we're gonna identify, set up as a password protected page. I'm just gonna call it one for now to make it very easy to access. We want it in the root directory. I'm gonna password protect it. I'm gonna make the password one just to keep it extremely simple. And just so we know where we are once we get into this page, I'm gonna give it a heading, and I'm just gonna call it one. And I'm just gonna call it one. Now if we go back to our directory here, I'm next gonna create a folder. And I want this folder, I'm gonna call it two. I want this folder password protected as well. I'm gonna password protect it as two. Now a folder itself does not have content. I need to put a page inside of it. So I'm gonna put a page inside of my folder and I'm gonna call that page 2a. So slash two slash a will be the actual page name. I don't need to password protect the page. It's already inside of a password protected folder. So I create that and again, to help keep things quite straightforward, we're gonna let us know where we are, slash two slash A. Now, if you've ever worked with Webflow folders, one of the things you may have noticed is that it handles things differently from the internet of old, in that there's no such thing as a default document concept. In the old days, you had a, a recognized file name that the web server would look for when somebody requests the folder name without a file name included. So if I was to request slash two, the web server would look for slash two slash index.html quite commonly, or other default documents that it was configured to search for. Webflow handles that a little differently. What you do instead is you create another uh, document, another page, at the root level, at the same level as the folder, but that that, uh, that document needs to have the same name as the folder. So I'm creating a page here. I'm gonna call this page two as well, slash two, just like the folder is. I'm gonna create that and you'll see here, let's go ahead and put in our, our heading here so that we know where we are. And this page would be like the default document, so we're gonna say that the content here is just at slash two. 
Now you see what we've got here, we've got our secure page called slash one, which is password protected with the password one. We've got our folder called slash two, which is password protected with the password two. It's got a sub document called A, which inherits the password protection of its folder. And we've got essentially a default document which should be returned when I request the document at slash two. And I need to password protect that as well. And it's gonna be very important to note here that it needs to have the same password as the folder. So I need to call it, give it the password two as well as my folder does. And the reason comes down to user experience, which I will demonstrate in just a minute. So let's go ahead and publish this and have a look at what's going on. All right, so now I go to my, my website here, my published website, and let's try a few things. So I've got two different password protected areas of the website. One is a folder and a, and a default document page, and another is a separate page all by itself. So let's go to the first document, slash one, and I'm get a password requested. And of course, let's use the wrong password just to make sure everything's working right. I'm typing in two here. Submit that, and I, excellent, I get an incorrect password error. So I'm gonna use the password that I actually signed to this page, which is one. Fantastic, I've now been allowed entry, and you can see I'm on the correct page, slash one. Now if I go to my page slash two, Excellent, so it recognizes that this part of the website is secured differently using a different password. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my password here, two. And I've been allowed in. And now I'm at essentially what counts as the default document page. It's a page that's at the same level as the folder rather than within it, and it's responding to request for slash two, even though the folder also has essentially the same name. Let's go back to one. Excellent, it has remembered my authentication there. Now I'm at two. And now let's have a look at the subpage, slash two, slash A. And I was immediately given access to this. Now this is very interesting. So what it's saying is that even though I've got three passwords set, I've got my independent page, which is called page one, I've got my folder, which is labeled two, and I've got my default document page, which is also called slash two. The page and the folder are sharing the same authentication. The way it's doing that is using cookies. And let's, let's have a look at what's going on here. So if I go to slash one, and I have a look at Google Chrome's developer console, I can go into application and cookies and have a look at what's going on in my website. And I can see here is a, is a cookie called WF auth page and it has a path of slash one. If I then go to my other folder here, slash two, and I can see I'm now inspecting slash two, I can see it's got WF auth page with a path of slash two. And it's gonna be the same thing if I go to slash two slash A, which is now my sub page, is that I now see I'm looking at slash two slash A, my auth page cookie, is using the path slash two. So that cookie is being shared between the page and the folder. The most important thing to realize about this is that from a user experience, it's very important to configure your page and your folder so that they are both password protected using the same password. Which means if you update it regularly on a monthly basis, you need to update it in two places. If you don't do that, you're gonna end up with some rather confused users who are essentially gonna have two different passwords they need to enter depending on exactly how they accessed that part of your website. If they accessed it from, for example, slash two directly, they'd have to enter one password. If they ended up accessing it through one of the subfolder documents like slash two slash a as their point of entry, they have to use a different password. Once they've entered either password in the right place though, they would then be able to access both the default document page slash two and any of the contents of the folder also called slash two. So this is, this is something important to recognize. Now, if you are a developer, 
and you've spent any time thinking about what this system um, does in terms of its cookie generation and how the paths work, one of the things that uh, you may be considering is how do I make use of those cookies to determine whether a user is logged in or not? So how do I identify whether WF auth page exists and how do I use that to, for example, show and hide certain components of the website? So for example, in my top navigation bar, I might wish to have a login button. But I only want to have a login button when I'm not logged in to that members section of the website. When I am logged in, I might want that button to disappear or change in some way to say, go to the members homepage. So this is a simple example, but there are many other areas where if I'm logged in, I want certain content and features and options to appear. And if I'm not logged in, I don't. And this is independent of being actually in the secured section of the website. This is where we're talking about the behavior of the user interface and the navigation overall. And as your website grows, this becomes more and more important. And one of the challenges here, I've spent a little bit of time playing with this in libraries, one of the challenges here appears to be the way that web browsers handle cookies with paths. Essentially, the web browser only allows that cookie to be available to you from a script that is in a page that is under that path. That is the only time the web browser actually gives you the cookie to access it. Now, there are a couple of, of hacks and workarounds. If anyone has actually found a way to make this work, I'd love to have a library where I could tag all of the content on my, on my page throughout my website, perhaps with uh, custom attributes that say, hey, show this only if someone's logged in, and hey, show this only if someone is not logged in. And then as the page loads, it would essentially check my current authentication status and then modify the page very quickly to hide and show certain elements depending on the current login state. As far as I can tell, no one has done this yet. If anyone would like to work with me on it, give me a call. I'm about 65% of the way there, but I've run into a few snags. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see what Webflow does with the authentication systems because it's a very exciting possibility to have such a powerful design platform married with some real development-oriented components.